I recognise that it's been a while since I've actually done an episode of Unemployed to Legend on this channel, so based on that and the fact that FM22 Beta will be out very very soon, I believe in less than a month from now, this is going to be the final episode and the final two games that I'm going to be bringing you for this series. So saying that, let's go out and enjoy them as best as we can. Welcome back everyone to the final two games of our Premier League season here at Norwich City. This is episode 29 of Unemployed to Legend. My name is Craig and as mentioned in the intro this is going to be the final proper episode of Unemployed to Legend for FM21. I plan on the series returning for FM22 but we'll get into that more later on probably in another video of what my plans are going to be for FM22. For now though we have two home games against Wolves and Southampton to finish the season. And since you were last with me, which was the disappointing exit from uh, the Europa League in the quarterfinals, yeah, the form's been quite mixed. It's kind of summed up uh, Norwich's season, to be honest with you. Leicester, a draw. Man City, a defeat in the 94th minute. Which isn't that bad, considering it was actually the B squad that I put out for that game, because a lot of my players are obviously tired. It's been a long season. Uh, we narrowly won against bottom side and uh, relegated side Brentford before a disappointing draw away at Newcastle. Uh, again, a late equaliser. So we're not doing well to hold on to Leeds, unfortunately. But this has meant we have, oh, we've slipped down into eighth, just outside the European qualification spots, but that's because Southampton have played a game more. So hopefully we win these two games, we finish in the top seven, and we would theoretically go into Europe next season. Of course, there's not going to be a next season in this series. But we want to finish on a high, so if there's a reason to stick around to see if we're going to finish uh, very strong, it's the fact that this could be our highest finishing season with Norwich in the Premier League. And if that's not enough for a like down below and a subscribe to the channel, I don't know what is. Especially, again, FM22 is coming up on the horizon. That's going to be the theme from now on, to be honest. FM22 is on the horizon, so saying that... In fact, saying that, I haven't even sorted out my team as it stands. In fact, that should be okay. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna roll with this. I think Mavropoulos should actually be in. Right now that I've actually sorted my starting eleven for this game, I'll make sure it's probably done before the next game uh, against. Oh, it's Southampton, I think. Yeah, we're playing Wolves, and then we're playing Southampton. So this is going to be a very very crucial two games. So. And this is how we're going to line up for the Wolves game. Both games are at home, remember. Gabriel in goal. Gonzalez, Mavopanos and Lovato and Nikolov in defence. I'm going to give Nikolov a opportunity here because Carrasco hasn't been in the greatest form recently at right back. And also Nikolov is the wonder kid. Is he still wonder kid? Yeah, he is. He's 20 years old. He's not played as much because I've actually preferred Carrasco at right back compared to Nikolov. But... I don't know, he's not performed badly, it's just circumstance, I've actually preferred Carrasco, I felt he offered more going forward. This is Nikolov's chance to show me why he should finish the season at right back instead. Stiller and Seki in the midfield of Ginchard, Campwell and Fires in the attacking midfield and Peter Lynch up front. I've kind of lost my patience with Udralgo, I do feel. Uh, he just hasn't performed that well. I don't think he fits my system to be honest with you. Despite the fact he's got the attributes, he's got everything that you could ask for to be honest. He's a consistent performer, he's very technical, his bravery and work rate make him a good team player. I just don't think I've actually played him in the right way. It's as simple as that. He's a playmaker and I've actually tried playing him as playmaker. But it just hasn't come off. That is the simple reality. It just hasn't worked. And if there was going to be another season, he would not be coming back next season. I think that's safe to say. He just wouldn't be coming back. So, let's just see how Campwell can... Uh, well, we know how Campwell can play in attacking midfield. He's been doing it for us for three seasons now. But let's see. I was going to say, I thought the screen had actually uh, fixed itself to give me six spaces on the tablet. But, never mind. This is on the smaller of the two screens, and there is Lynch just hits the post. It's something I haven't actually sorted out in FM21 at all. Here's hoping I can sort it, the screens that is, on the tablet, 
for FM22. I mean, if I do this, it comes up, but I kind of want to have the bar at the bottom because then obviously I can do shouts, which would be a good move right about now. I shouldn't have done encourage yet because we've just hit a highlight. And there is Gonzalez on the left, and it spills in, which means that encourage shout is going to go completely to waste. Not ideal. But what was ideal was that Gonzalez has just smacked the ball pretty much into the back of the net via a goalkeeper mistake. I do not care. I would happily take that right now. Yeah, that was pretty awful goalkeeping. Awful, awful, awful. I don't care. And yeah, they're frustrated by the feedback. That's understandable. I should have waited until after the highlight had finished. It's potluck. What can I say? But as mentioned before, yes, this is the final episode, the final two games of the series. A part of it is because of time commitments, not just for the fact FM22 is less than a month away, the beta, that is. But also, just generally, I haven't had much time in my life at the moment, for personal reasons and work reasons as well, that I just haven't been able to do episodes. I haven't even been able to play the game as much, apart from, well... Apart from a few streams here and there, for those who have been watching me on Twitch, I'll drop the link somewhere above my head. You would have seen it at the beginning as well, hopefully. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Craig's FM. There will be more streams coming in the next month, and especially when FM22 drops. And Lynch is through here, just can't get the shot off, unfortunately. The series has just kind of petered out, which is a shame. I've enjoyed it, and for those who have continued watching, I hope you've enjoyed it as well. But overall, it's just become a circ um, yeah, circumstance of time, unfortunately. And, oh god, just off the line. Well done. Who was that? Was that Gonzalez? Six foot three beast that he is. But one thing I do hope to do when Unemployed to Legend returns for FM22 is, whoops, will hopefully be much, much more consistent. At least, I didn't want to do that. Hopefully at least two to three times a week. Actually, at least three times a week, hopefully, because obviously episodes should be coming out more often. But what we're going to do here is... Paul Fires is actually hired, so where is Ginchard? He is there. He's on the left, so Udrago is going to come into attacking midfield. I know I've said I've lost my patience with him, but he is kind of useful for that attacking midfield role. Campwell is going to go on the right because he can play out wide, which is fair enough. Oh god, just just wide there. My defence, I know, is not the strongest in the world. In fact, what we are going to do, we're going to drop Ben Stiller back. We're also going to drop Seki back. And we're going to bring on Jean-Philippe Gamin, who has been injured for me in recent months. In fact, do you know what? Gamin can be the defensive midfielder. He's more than capable of fulfilling that role anyway. But consistency for this series in FM22 is what is going to be absolutely vital and that's what I hope to do because I've enjoyed this series. But there will be more details on that uh, in a later video which should be out I think in the next week or so. Oh my god almost an own goal, jeez. Now our defence is almost conceding own goals, it's ridiculous. Campwell is now knackered and Sean Mimikeki could be coming on unless Campwell can hold on for a few minutes. I'm kind of looking at my defence more than anything and that's what, exactly what we're going to do. Mm. Radderby's on the bench, really? Let's have a look at him. Let's have a look at Radderby. I mean, he's not a bad player in and of himself but just that terrible injury that he had, the cruciate ligament injury that he had while on loan at Sporting kind of did for him. Yeah, his acceleration is well down, his pace is well down. He's still six foot. He's six foot seven. I'm pretty sure when I bought him, he was only six foot four or something like that. He's had a growth spurt. He's 21. He's not growing anymore. But he's not a terrible player. I hope. <laughs> he says, right. And I'm hoping we can hold out for a victory here, a well-needed victory. Hopefully, one nil. And it's not our last home game of the season. We've got that against Southampton. And that will be a battle for se uh, well, the top seven places. Because fifth and sixth, I don't think, is sorted yet. So let's see how we do. Can we secure a European spot? In fact, it is coming down more or less to seventh place. Us versus Southampton in the last game of the season. A win or draw for us. We're in the top seven. And I'll take that to end the series.
Ladies and gentlemen, the final game of the series. Home against Southampton, winner, or if we draw, will be in Europe next season, which we're not going to be seeing. So this is going to be the 11 that we're going to be sending out. It's pretty much the same 11 as the game against Wolves. And I think the bench is going to be the same as well. Yep. Yeah, there's no real change. Radderby is going to stay on the bench instead of Charisma. Apparently he's been more informed recently, so... Uh, if he does come on, it'll be a nice little way to end the series for him. So, home against Southampton. And I think this is a team who've been a bit of a bogey one for us. I think certainly this season, and maybe last season. And that's probably why Roberto Mancini is their manager. So, yeah, let's see how that goes. Uh, let's give the fans something to cheer about. Yeah, let's do that. Give the fans something to cheer about to end the season hopefully some European football for them for next season and this must be a big match on the telly because um, I'm guessing there's nothing else to play for in the league I think the Champions League and the Premier League titles of uh, positions have been sorted yet Man City are the champions Bournemouth and Burnley not yet down I think the relegation battle will be more important than this one to be honest so I'm surprised we're on the telly but who cares hopefully we'll get to put on a nice little show for the cameras and Ginchar just <laughs> loses out on the ball there as Lovato he's got a new contract because a it doesn't really matter now I just decided to offer him all the money uh, possible and B well I'd like to think that Norwich will hold on to him he's got a contract now until 2031 obviously we won't be able to see him into 2031 and there is fires the big surprise package of the save and not just the season the save okay Paul fires that's his 25th of the season I didn't actually see the graphic at the bottom but 25 goals considering I brought him in I've said this so many times before I've brought him in on a hunch that he might turn out decent and then would most likely just sell him on for a profit uh, later on but he's turned into one of the key players for this squad and not just in the Premier League but also in Europe He's a European scoring striker and has been proved now in the Europa League. And I'd like to think that Norwich will build around him and uh, Peter Lynch in the future. Of course, Peter Lynch is coveted by every team under the sun. Of course, England international now. I don't think I've really pointed that out much in the past. He's an England international. He played one game and he scored in his debut. He's also included in the World Cup. And speaking of the World Cup, this is the year 2026 in games. So one video I will be doing more than likely within the next week. In fact, hopefully by the weekend. I'll probably say by this weekend will be the 2026 World Cup simulation. Now that's the one that's taking place in Mexico, the USA and Canada. So that's going to be a nice, interesting one to end well, the simulations for this save on. And Lynch almost in, almost has a goal. Be nice to see him score to end this series. But that video, uh, most likely you expect it around probably Saturday or, yeah, you know what, I'll say Saturday. It's not very often I actually promise videos. And I'm loosely promising this, but I'd say expect it for this Saturday. I think I've mentioned it enough. Expect it for this Saturday. <laughs> Just to make sure how I, in case I haven't mentioned it enough times there is João Pedro who I have been warned about and I think that just hit the bar or something it's a very powerful shot I know that and this is the one thing I don't like about FM21 I do want them to sort this out for FM22 when you make a short throw and it doesn't go to one of your players it is annoying it is pointless and it's not really realistic because you'd have players moving around all over the place but for some reason they don't hear and Lynch has got his goal to finish off the series is 34th of the season the man is 21 years old and he's just been getting better season by season since we brought him in from Birmingham in the championship Cantwell playing it through to Fires, Fires slowing it through to Lynch those two have a very good understanding now this is what I mean about building the side around Fires and Lynch that's what we would have been doing obviously if we were continuing the series uh, it's also worth mentioning I have ended the series before that was just as a hiatus after we left Wigan in our previous club in this series but this time the series is actually officially ending obviously because it's FM22 less than a month away we've made it half time 2-0 up and hopefully looking good to finish in the top seven I haven't actually looked whereabouts we'd finish in the league at the moment as it stands we'd finish sixth because Tottenham are drawing at the moment so I think 
Yeah, they're drawing away at Fulham. Leicester, I believe, are winning. Where are they? I can't even see where their result. I can't even see where their match is. To be fair, Gonzalez doing well to win the ball back there after Campwell nearly messed it up. Campwell into Stiller. Stiller, I'd say, is in another underrated player. We are going to go through more of the players who I think have really shone out in this series, and Stiller is going to be one of those we're going to be looking at anyway. Uh, Leicester, Leicester, Leicester. Where are they? Uh, they're drawing against Aston Villa. Okay, cool. It is the last day of the season, so obviously all teams are playing at the same time. And it's just about a bit of game management now. And Seki just firing wide from a free kick. We got a corner out of it, actually. It's not actually wide. The keeper did save it. Seki into Lovato and Lynch at the far post. Couldn't get anything on it, which is rather unfortunate. Paul Fires is tired, as is Campwell. No, Ginchard. Oh, good grief. Right, so Campwell is going to go out wide, and Udrago is going to go in the middle. <sighs> no, he's not. He's going to go out left. He's going to go out left. Shus Alba will get his final appearance. He's going to go in as the advanced playmaker. Is he an advanced playmaker or an attacking midfielder? It doesn't really matter. He can do both, apparently. So Udrago and Shus Alba will come on. Uh, Campwell will go out wide on the right hand side. Uh, we'll drop a little bit of praise for the boys just to keep them motivated. Campwell and Stiller are looking a bit tired. So Gammon is going to come in as that ball winning midfielder. Just to drop him back. Just protect him. Use him to protect the back four. Sorry. Protect him as well, to be fair, because he's, he's just been injury prone this entire season. It's a shame. He's missed more than he's actually played. But it is a job done. Good way to end the season. Three wins from the last four games. And we have secured... I don't know. Is it top seven or top six? And actually another clean sheet. Clean sheets have been so hard to come by since October. But have we finished sixth or seventh? So we finished seventh in the end. Okay. But... I mean, considering the start to the season we had, it is disappointing. But at the same time, it's Norwich City. So seventh place is their best finish in, what, 30 years? More than 30 years <laughs> since the uh, Premier League actually started. But that is going to be it for the games. That was the last game that we saw. Not much drama, thankfully, involved. But to be honest with you, considering the season we've had, I will take that. I mean, that's how well we started the season. It's just a shame we couldn't keep that up. But whatever. We have indeed finished. Top 7 in the Premier League. Peter Lynch... Oh, Peter Lynch, he has won the Golden Boot, alongside uh, Erling Haaland. Oh, wow. I didn't realise Peter Lynch had scored that many Premier League goals. That's really pleasing to see. I did say he was getting better season on season. I think that's the proof in the pudding right there. 24 league goals. I mean, 15 last year. He's definitely top calibre. I think had we continued the series, it would have been very, very tough to keep hold of him. But that's really pleasing to see. We will be going through the season review and also just go through some of the players, I think, and some of the highlights, I believe, of what the, of the series overall. That video will be out on Thursday. I look forward to seeing you then. Folks, if you have enjoyed this episode and the series overall, there will be one whole playlist of this entire series from Wigan to Norwich City on the channel. I'll put the link uh, down in the description as well and probably somewhere around my head uh, will probably be the card for the playlist as well make sure to hit the like button down below and smash the big red subscribe button as we head for fm22 i hope to see you for the new game release even if it is the beta well the beta is still going to be important anyway and i will be putting up a video of my plans for fm22 very very soon i look forward to seeing you in the next video guys and i look forward to seeing you for fm22 take care